All right. Um, let's see what we got. All right. So uh, sounds good. Um, all right. So can you guys see me? Uh, let me know here in the chat if everything is good, uh, if audio, uh, video are doing okay. Okay, good. Thank you, Candy. All right, let's go ahead and see who's all here. All right, so going all the way to the top, uh, we've got uh, AJ's here, uh, Fish Tropic, HC Aqua, uh, Pet Sonics is here. Uh, Daryl's here. Welcome, Daryl. Uh, welcome, HC Fish Tropic, um, AJ, and Pet Sonics. Um, Can um, Candy's here. Uh, Pam's here. Welcome, Fifty Four Punchy. Uh, let me see who else we've got. Dan Slee is here. And going down to the bottom. Um, Let's see. I think that's it for now. Uh, Melvin's here. Hi, Melvin. Uh, welcome. So, uh, so we got a pretty good uh, Susan for SLC is here as well. So, uh, welcome. Uh, and uh, Daryl's here. Yep. So, uh, all right. Let's see. We got a pretty good group. I uh, got about 12 people here now. Um, so, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first and foremost, um, one thing I want to do real quick first is uh, thank Corey from the Aquarium Co-op for uh, sharing uh, Sunday's video out. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, picked up a lot of subs and views. So I uh, really want to thank Corey for that. Um, so one thing I was kind of thinking about when coming up for a subject for this video was to... I just I kind of realized there was a lot of people who are new to the channel and really didn't know where the fish barn came from. So... I put together a little video series uh, that we'll show here, and I'll kind of talk through it and let you guys see uh, and let you guys see uh, kind of how this was built and kind of where it started. So last week we sort of did the where everything else came from. So now we're going to bring it full circle and bring it up to where the barn is currently at. So uh, small fry aquarium fishes here. Hi, welcome to the stream. Uh, Daniel Keeping Fish is here as well. Welcome. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started with the video. And then I'll just talk through it as we go. So, alright, so this is the beginning of the fish barn. So this, this is the garage door, and this is what it looked like when we started. So this was basically a storage area. Um, we had a bunch of storage here, uh, stored boat motors, um, just saw all kinds of random stuff. So, uh, Reels Tanks here. Hi, how's it going? So, this was the beginning. Uh, Jake Hussey is here. Welcome. Yep, so there's the uh, there's an old DIY kayak I made. So, someday when we're doing something fun, I'll show you kind of a cool video about one of those. So we're heading upstairs. Um, Candy, um, there was this was started in March of last year, was when this started. So this is the upstairs. Um, you can see it was kind of a, kind of a train wreck. So that's the uh, that was the upstairs. Um, so I had to clean out, clean out all of this to kind of start with. Yeah, HC Aqua, I did make my own kayak, and I've never taken it out. So I was going to take it on a test trip. And um, so now we're getting to the, I'll get back to the kayak in just a minute. So now this is the uh, kind of some progress, um, progress video here. Um, insulation is up downstairs. Uh, started with a little bit of the drywall. And then uh, I basically had to uh, took all the windows out from the basement or the basement, but the downstairs section. And then from there, uh, we're gonna we're gonna end up uh, re drywalling the whole thing. So uh, the insulation. So this is like an old. Um, 
Uh, TM Aquatics is here. Uh, Slippery Fish Aquatics is here as well. So welcome guys to the chat. So we're just going through the uh, beginning of the fish barn. So it's just a bunch of insulation. And then uh, that's the back wall and the stairs. Uh, we, we did start putting some... Uh, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, some moisture barrier up. So coming along. And uh, this clip is going a little long. Apologize. So, and then that's the electrical box that goes into the barn. So, this is going a little. This is going a little slow right here. Let me see if I can kind of go through, push through this one a little bit. Oh, that was not. All right. So this is the update from the upstairs. I think this was about April, like April or May, like kind of what, right around when I went to the uh, ALA. So. All right, so back downstairs again. Uh, Susan, I'm amazing. Um, I do okay. Okay, so this is further along now. This is getting close to the uh, to June of last year. Um, so there were some things that happened in between here. But uh, basically did uh, all the drywall work in here. Did uh, Started putting some tanks in. And I kind of went, up, went all over the map with putting tanks in. So, we'll see here in a little bit the final, what it kind of finally ended up as. But this was just kind of like, I needed somewhere to put tanks, and so I kind of tried to make this work. So, uh, those 55s did end up there for now. Uh, New York goal, I see you, you're putting all that YouTube money to good, um, yeah, they're, they're the uh, whole zero dollars of YouTube money. <laughs> So, Lumpy Dog is here. Welcome. So, so we're starting to get, you know, this, the walls are done down here now. I did try to level the floor out, and I'll say it was not the best job I've ever done. Um, but I did t steal a trick from Corey in his video from doing a, from building a fish door. I did find some, uh, some blue, uh, that's some electrical work I did. I, that blue paint I did find in the um, the bin at, at uh, Lowe's. The uh, so I paid like five bucks a piece for it. For the so I bought like two gallons of it. So all right, this is just some more of trying to finish up the rest of it. Uh, the electrical was I ran some more electrical out here as well. Kind of uh, and then that's the garage door. So what I did do. Is I walled it, I walled it in front of the garage door. Uh, reason being is that, you know, someday if we ever move out of here and someone wants to actually use it as a garage, uh, there was a um, you could actually take the wall out and turn it back into a garage if you needed to. Uh, small fry aquarium fish. Uh, was, was there a method to uh, the tank size based on the fish you wanted to specialize in? No, I. Did not. Uh, um, I really didn't. Um, I had a fish room before this. Uh, it was that was downstairs, so that kind of dictated a lot of it. And then I always changed my mind on fish. Yeah, no, we're not going to move anytime soon, uh, Candy. Um, I've moved fish once in my life, and I never want to do it again. It's literally, I will say moving fish is, is literally the worst thing on earth. But, you know, someday, you know, hopefully 50 years from now, someone, you know, my kids will have to take the wall out. So, but the garage door is there in case, you know, you never know, right? So, figured I would leave it, you know, not take the garage door out, so... But it is insulated behind that garage door, so there's a there's a wall, an exterior wall, and then insulation, and then there's the garage door. So, so yeah, we're still going through here. Uh, this is looping this part. Uh, did it freeze? Yeah, moving twenty. Yeah. 
let me see something here. I think it may have, uh, I think the video may have died here. Okay. All right. Well, that's kind of, uh, all right, that didn't, that's, it sort of froze. I don't know why it froze. Well, maybe not. Okay, so, okay, so we're putting water in the tank now. Okay. I thought it froze for a minute. So, um, I kind of built a hybrid of the cinder block stands. Uh, so basically, there's uh, the cinder block stand. Um, that was how the air conditioner was run, and I think it still is. Uh, so there's still some little bit more work to do, like wire management stuff in here. But if you can see here, and I wish I had the pointer, but if you can see the wood, uh, so I kind of made the hybrid um, aquarium co-op uh, stand. Um, let me see. Oh, so small fry aquariums. Um, I'm working to move from a basement to a garage. Sealing up the door isn't an option. Did, did you discover a way to seal the door against the frame? I have not. Um, yeah, I'm in Ohio and our attempts are at the, I think he got cut off, but, uh, um, yes, New York Gold, I do have running water out here. Um, and so I basically dug the yard up and, uh, put the water out here. So this is kind of where it ended up. Um, uh, this was probably about August or September of this year. So that's the, in the back, you're looking from the couch and you're looking, um, towards the, Oh, and then it's going to flip again. And then this is looking towards the couch. And that was that rack that's looking there. Um, JC Aquatics is here. Welcome. And then back to New York Gold's question. Yes, we, um, I did uh, dig a, dig some water out here. And I do have a, uh, uh, a pump that pumps it out here. Because it's about 70 feet uh, or so. So... So this is the look towards the walking in, and then this is the upstairs uh, where the clownfish rack is. This is not the best picture, um, but I forgot when I got a new phone that I... Yeah, there's a reason why Lumpy Dog, um, I do know that about the cinder, the cinder blocks, and the reason I do that is if I ever want to run plumbing through it, um, so I have a way to like not to run the plumbing without having to crawl a behind it or b like put it in front so there's a re there is a method to the madness of why i do stack them that way um yep i we, do we, know uh, that if you stack up. them the other way they uh, are we painted the back you know, and added the bulkhead strength, but so uh we are in a uh, pretty good shape I, uh, here uh you see there's still some of the dust from i'm in, from I'm in the, my chair uh, yes um, <laughs> from drilling the glass in the back, but uh, oh, I am uh, located in Metro Detroit, and then we'll so, uh, the, uh, get ready to go here in the northern while. suburbs of so, uh, Metro Detroit. Uh, we're working on some so, other stuff on the other side. So, now, but, uh, yeah, no, there is a method to we'll the madness of the cinder later. blocks. Okay, we've now but, um, moved so this the, is the clownfish uh, clownfish buckets uh, over here. Reading setup uh, that I was working on. Containers are now moved over here. Uh, so that cleared out some space in the. Uh, oh, you're hearing the video's audio. And also, okay, I must have missed one. I apologize, guys. That we showed a little bit earlier. So and, I uh, uh, the air pump is now up here as well. I, I kind of pieced uh, this so together from a lot of my old videos. For now, anyway. So I apologize for over. hearing the audio the for culture over, as well. And then no, uh, that I, no, point, I, know. I think we'll be uh, we'll be all set for the moment. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the fish barn and the progress we made with building out the upstairs. With that so being I guess said, you guys can I would appreciate it. it if you enjoyed this content. If you would like, share the content. And as always, all right, so sorry about well. that, guys. And as always, you get to hear me talk and hear me talk Peace at the out. same time. Guppies. Uh, so this is the butt guppy tank uh, before it's as it's moving on. <laughs> so, yeah. So I apologize I, if you want it. If it's uh. All right, so uh, are you guys still hearing the audio on this now that it's switched, or no? Uh, mute media audio. Okay, thanks, Sandy. Or thanks, not Sandy. Thanks, Susan. Let me go... Uh,
That wasn't it. Alright, let's go into settings. Is that better? Alright. Thank you, Susan. I'm still a, uh, I'm still kind of a uh, newbie on the OBS. Okay, so this is the office right now. This is where we're at. Um, Daniel keeping fish, heading to bed. Yeah, if it's 2.15 in the morning, I hear you. So this is kind of starting to get where it's set up. Um, so now we're down to the, kind of where we're at now. So, so yeah, so this is, um, the, we'll call it the Cichlid Island. So I did end up moving, um... So, kind of walking back through here. Uh, so those are the new tanks I bought uh, right at uh, New Year's Eve. Um, still deciding what to do with them. I did figure out they're 37 and a half gallons. So they're a little smaller than I thought, but they uh, will work out just fine. So that is kind of the, basically the end of the update. There's two tanks here. Um, I did redo that stand. It's a little, a little tight. It was a little bit too close together. So, and then this is the upstairs part. Uh, some of you guys have seen this already, uh, but wanted to kind of just, like I said, get a, uh, yeah, breeder tank. So those are good live bear breeder tanks. So I'm kind of just working now on getting everything plumbed together. So, um, unfortunately I don't have any little, ah, excuse me. I do not have any clownfish updates. Uh, I haven't pulled eggs in a while, um, but had had too many other things to do up here. Uh, but I do want to get another batch going soon. Uh, so, and then we're back to the beginning. So, uh, like we kind of we did uh, like we did last week, I want to leave it up to you guys to if you want to watch this again, or do you guys want to want me to just to flip it back to the regular screen. Uh, Widquatix is here. Welcome. Hey, real quick, um, something uh, I want to talk to you guys about the kayak, because I did uh, forget H.G. Aqua's question. So, I did build a, a kayak. I found some guy on YouTube who was building uh, those out of something called Poor Man's Fiberglass. It's like taking like a sheet uh, with some some sort of glue. I think it was, uh, it's like the wood glue. I can't remember the, what it's called at the moment. But I uh, ended up making one of, one of those, and then unfortunately... Um, I had it tied on top of my car. Uh, this was a pre-dad van, and uh, it kind of took a, uh, it kind of came off of the car and uh, got run over by a semi. So it kind of took a turn for the worse. But uh, Small Fry is uh, heading to bed, so uh, so thank you, Small Fry, for coming out. Um, I did, well, let me answer your question before you leave, though. Um, to pin it against the garage, um, do you need the garage door to open or not? Um, if you don't need the garage door to open, can you build like a wall in front of it? Or behind it, I mean, like so that so that you could have it insulated, but there's a barrier? Or would you want to, uh, maybe with some great stuff foam if you don't want to open it? That's the one I could think of. Uh, water box is here. Hey Chung, how are you doing? So we are, um, we're just walking through for you guys that just joined uh, some of the uh, building of the fish barn. So, so if you guys have any questions throughout, um, I can let you guys know. Uh, but basically, right now we're looking at the uh, some of the just the insulation work, etc. So he's dropping by to see the barn. Yeah, so. So for those of you who don't know, this building that we're uh, live streaming in right now um, used to be the old garage to the to the house. So whoever owned the house before us basically basically took this building and ran it out, you know, moved it out probably about 50 feet or so to the back of the property, and then uh, built a new garage in its place. So uh, so this is basically like a two-story. 
uh, one and a half car garage. It's got kind of the vaulted ceiling barn look to it. So that's how it became the fish barn. So this is the old um, heading up the stairs now. Um, as I'm trying, you know, it took literally like two months to clean this out. So this is, uh, up to just flipped again, but basically doing a lot of the insulation work, doing some of the uh, waterproofing, etc. Because um, wet, ins wet, moist insulation is kind of a bad thing. So uh, these are starting to get some of the tanks set up. Um, yes, the garage door. Um, water box. Yes, the garage door is sealed. Um, I don't have a good picture of it, but how it works basically is there's a fake wall in front of the garage. So like where the uh, normal molding would be. Um, there's, I literally built a wall in front of the garage. And so that basically became the, um, let me see if I can get a picture on here. I may switch the screen on you. See if I have a good picture of the front. Or actually, you know what? Um, if you look at the the, um, let me see. Give me one second, guys. I got. I think I can answer this with a picture. But All right, yeah, I'm going to have to explain it. I don't have a picture of that, and I don't want to keep you guys waiting. So basically what I did is I built a um, I built a wall in front of the garage and then basically insulated that, and then so that's all sealed, and then the garage door is um, still usable if we ever decide to not have fish in here. So I know that's a poor answer to the qu your question, um, I think if you look in the thumbnail, or the, uh, not thumbnail, but the, uh, yeah, the thumbnail for this video, it, take a look, and I think you can see it on that, um, on that, because it, because I think you can see, like, the ridge where, where the door should be, so let me see it, let me pull it out here and see, we're going to do this very, not technologically advanced, uh, good night, Susan, thank you for coming. Yeah, so let me put this up here. So like down in here, that would be where the garage door is. And so I basically sealed it up with a uh, with basically the, the same sort of uh, exterior paneling that you would use on the uh, on the outside of the building, and just built a wall and insulated it. So uh, we're now kind of getting into just heading back to where this video is. Uh, this is now probably about uh, around the 4th of July. Uh, the fish were moved out here uh, 4th of July of last year. So, so you know, you just find whatever you can get. And so we started building the um, aquarium co-op stands. And then I did modify it, and I just used the 2x4 in the middle instead of using the blocks to kind of save a little bit of space. Um, there was a guy a long, long time ago when I used to, when I used to, uh, do the salt, oh, I still do the salt water thing, but, uh, when I wrote, was exclusively salt water, I would go ahead and, uh, I would go, there was a guy named Rocket Engineer where I learned how to build stands from, not these kind of stands, but the, uh, the wood stands, and, he had done like the tensile strength of a 2x4. Um, so yeah, let me get to Candy's question and then Wid, I'll get to yours. Um, how many tanks did you add from what I had in the house? I had in the house... Um, there's tanks total in here right now. There's about 47 uh, tanks in here. And I added probably... There was probably about 10 to 15 tanks in the house. 
And so I added the other 30 when I got out here. I, I kind of found them wherever. Uh, dollar per gallon stale. Uh, found three of them at the side of, on the side of the road at my neighbor's house, two doors down, um, including a 75 gallon. So that was kind of a big score. Um, let me see where else. Um, I bought a whole bunch New Year's Eve from a... Uh, Yeah, so, oops, sorry, I missed, um, hold on a second. Yeah, so, so, Chung, I am going to insulate the, uh, the fake wall. Yep. So, that is already insulated and everything. I don't have a video of it. So, this is what the fish barn kind of looks like today. Or, not today, but kind of August of this year. So, there's a goldfish tank pond in the front. Uh, there's my 245-gallon reef tank. That's not reef tank, but a uh, fowler tank that's in the back there. And then if you look to the um, to the right, will be the cichlid, basically kind of the cichlid shelf. And then uh, the climate here, uh, yes, it is cold. This is Michigan, so it is extremely cold here. Um, so I think it's, today it was about 25 degrees or so. Um, I do run this on an electric heater, which um, I've been getting the electric bill, and it's been ugly. I mean... It's, I mean I kind of knew that was coming, but it is what it is. Um, but it is staying pretty warm in here. I'm not having any heat issues. Um, and then uh, one thing I'll talk about too while we're building this, while we're talking about this, is I kind of went through and decided to do, you know, if something happened, how would I com combat it? So do a lot of uh, analysis and say, okay, if I lost water for... So if I, if I lost water, you know, like say, you know, the pipes froze or whatever else, um, what would I do? So I'll basically, um, I, for example, I put a frost, a frost, I can't say this word, a frost-free faucet uh, outside. And then from there, so I can always get water and I can always run it out here with the hose if I, if I need water, for example. So um, there's internet out here as well. So um, this is this computer is hardwired in, but uh, but yeah. So this is almost pretty much done. I mean, I don't have any more room really. Oh, uh, water boxes in South, um, Southern uh, California. So yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I didn't realize it was that hard to say until I actually tried to say it live on the internet, and then I was like, "Bath free, bath that," or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, yep. So, um, Southern California. Been to? Uh, I've been. Are you like uh, San Diego, um, L.A. area? Um, I did uh, have go to L.A. once. Uh, we. Uh, I went to the University of Michigan for my undergrad, and they, uh, they went to the Rose Bowl. And so we went to, uh, I took a bus from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Pasadena, California, and went to the, uh, went to the Rose Bowl. Um, something I will never do again is uh, ride a bus that far. But, uh, yeah, so um, Otterbox is here. Yeah, so for sure, it does retain a lot of the heat. Uh, one thing I found, and even I found this in the um, the old fish room in my uh, when I had it in my basement. Um, I noticed that the the flowing water, um, the flowing water kind of helps do the heat. So if you run like a central system and you flow the water through the building. Like it kind of keeps the heat up a little bit too. It kind of helps. Uh, ooh, a bus across the country. Yes, that was. Um, this was you know college days. You know, so like drinking, you know, drinking beer was cool and everything till about Chicago, and then you basically had um, a day and three quarters of just not fun. You know, it was uh, something I will never do again. So. 
Um, I remember being like all cramped up, and I called my dad at like three o'clock in the morning, um, and I was like, "You need to buy me a plane ticket because this is ridiculous, and I'm never doing this again." Blah blah blah. So. Yep, so this is, uh, we're back to kind of where it's at now, so I've added the tanks in the middle. In the middle. Um, the, we took the, uh, we took the south route through um, Arizona, so we went from, uh, basically we drove to Chicago, took, um, I think it was I-55 south to, like, through, like, St. Louis to Little Rock, and then we took, um, like, I think it was I-10 all the way through, like, Texas and Arizona, or, sorry, no, I-40, I think it was, sorry. Uh, we took all that all the way through, um, like, Arizona, New Mexico, etc. So it was, uh, it was an interesting trip. So, something, like I said, I won't do that again. Um, the farthest I've driven since then, I think was actually this year, um, no, no. I drove out to Boston one time with a friend of mine uh, to see someone we went to college with. And that was 12 hours, but that was me driving. So th I would rather do that than uh, ride on a bus. So um, so this is the kind of the garage. If I could pause this, I, I could show you kind of. So this is the beginning of the video again. It's just looping through here. And that actually is the heater I use right there. Um, it's uh, called an FU five or FUH five fourteen. So, or yeah, five fourteen or something like that. And it uh, does a pretty good job in here. Um, it's not cheap, but it is what it is. Um, it's uh, it's a thirty amp heater uh, set up on a thermostat. So. And then there's the DIY kayak again, which I've never used. But, uh, yeah, there's some videos out there. If you look up, like, um, XPS foam kayak, uh, you can see some videos out there on that. They're pretty interesting. So we're just kind of back to this is the original disaster that was upstairs here. So that being said... Um, I think you guys have all seen everything I think now, so I'm gonna flip it back to the camera back to me. <laughs> LA to Las Vegas, yeah. I've never been to Las Vegas. So I'm gonna flip it back to me here. So So um, I guess the one thing I'll cover too is um kind of give you guys an update on fishy bingo. So uh, we did fishy bingo um, last week. Uh, some of you guys were here for that. So what that is is basically uh, two of the clubs here did uh, this event called Fishy Bingo where you would bring a, um, call it a, a uh, you bring your bags of fish or you can actually just buy the raffle of the ticket. And as you got a bingo, you could go up and grab a bag of fish. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, came back with some cool stuff. Uh, so the unboxing of that will be... Uh, Thursday's video. So I shot the unboxing of that. Uh, I need to do some more edits on it. Uh, I'm not happy with a couple things on it. So really uh, looking forward to that. And then uh, I haven't come up with Sunday's video yet. Um, but I'm thinking about doing a uh, full fish... Um, Come to Vegas. I should do an aquarium show in Vegas. Call it Stop Drowning Your Fish Con. Um, they did do a MACNA in um, Las Vegas last year. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, MACNA is a... Uh, it's, the, it's kind of the... Uh, Matthew Wiggins, that's an interesting way to swap fish. Yes, that was a lot of fun, actually. Um, it was kind of really interesting with the uh, cichlid stuff. Because as you did the cichlids, um, you really had to know your species names. Because if you didn't, um, you could end up with a, um, call it a nine foot long pound, of, um, nine foot long uh, piece of terror. 
Uh, what else? Oh, you forgot about the yeah, Macna. Yeah, I. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, for my ten years in the hobby, it's been mostly saltwater. Um, over the last couple of years, I've gotten more and more into the freshwater side of it. Um, but I still do have quite a few saltwater tanks in here, uh, mostly focused on uh, like breeding clownfish for now. Um, I do have a 245 gallon fish only tank down in the basement. I always call it the basement, but it's the, in the uh, first level here, which uh, uh, I'm going to do some larger angelfish, uh, butterfly fish. So, and I do have another uh, 125 as well downstairs that's, a, uh, that's going pretty well also. They're all hooked into the same system. And I'll have to go through that at some point. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't go to Macna in Las Vegas this year, um, or last year. Uh, some of my friends went, um, said it was a good time, but I can see that getting uh, rather out of hand. So, do you guys have any, any fish questions? Uh, I know we didn't talk a lot of fish topics tonight, but uh, we can talk uh, whatever you'd like. Um, we can talk about... Um, fish food. Um, so, you know, the last video I did was on the uh, Vibrobites. So, I'll do a fish tube whatever con. Yeah. It's kind of, um, the fish tube whatever con has kind of turned into the, to the uh, aquatic experience. And, and I think Aquashella will be much the same way. Um, I went to the one in Chicago last year. Um, actually, I have the shirt on today. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was literally like... Um, I had aquatic experience. It was literally like I was afraid I was going to steal somebody's camera. Um, that was a lot worse than mine. So, I actually show you my camera right here. And I actually have two of them because I broke one of them. But this is uh, what I'm shooting, shooting on right here. It's a uh, Canon SL2. And, you know, everyone has a camera, and they all kind of look the same. And they all, almost all of them have this Rode microphone on it. But, uh, yeah, yeah so, so everyone, everyone has, has, like, you know, the same, same they all look the same. same. But, uh, but, yeah, so, so it's, it's kind, kind of, of a, a, uh, <clears throat> so you're, I was always, always afraid, afraid of stealing somebody's, somebody's camera. camera. Oh, oh, you're getting, getting echo? echo? Is that, Is that better? better? Uh oh. All right, hold, hold on, on a second. second. Um, bike, bike audio. audio, audio input, input capture. So, how's that? Is that better? Yeah. All right, so I muted the audio input capture, and okay. All right, I've never had that happen before. So, like I said, I'm a uh, rather, you know, still kind of a rookie on Streamlabs. So, forgive me. Uh, this is my probably like tenth live stream or so. Uh, so I picked up a lot of it pretty quick. But, uh, what if the camera did something to it? So, uh, picked it up pretty quick. Um, I'll have to say, though, um, jo like doing YouTube and stuff, I've learned quite a bit. Um, so, when I started doing the live stream, I was doing it on an a, uh, old laptop I had, and it was really bad. So, uh, so, um... Maple Street's here. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Maple Street, are you heading up to Grand Rapids for the uh, the swap on the 25th? Um, yeah, Candy, I'm sorry about the... Uh, yeah, about you can't not able to go to Aquashella, but I uh, understand for sure. Um, so... Yeah, so that's uh, going on. Um, if you guys are anywhere near Grand Rapids, Michigan... Um, they're, uh, the Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Valley Aquarium Society is having a, uh, they're having a swap down, uh, down in Grand Rapids, so 
Um, I know that Sergeant Tank will be there. Um, I plan on going. I don't, I'm not going to have a booth or anything. I'm just going to go, uh, go and hang out and maybe buy some stuff. So, but if you guys are there, uh, go check that out for sure. I'm sure there's some good stuff. Um, I know there's a gentleman there from uh, Kalamazoo, I think it is, who has quite a few of the rarer live bearing species. Um, you're helping my, your buddy move his fish room. Yes, we were talking about that earlier, about how uh, moving your fish room is probably one of the worst uh, jobs on earth. Um, we covered a little bit last uh, last time about how I moved my uh, original fish room. Uh, that was about 40 miles from here uh, when we moved up here. So uh, that was a disaster. Uh, do you guys want to talk? Um, let me see anything else. Oh, and I did join the uh, Motor City Aquarium Society. Uh, so, th so for those of you guys uh, that don't know, I do uh, work. I do not work, but I do. Uh, I am on the board of directors for. It's called the Marine Life Aquarium Society of Michigan. So that is um, that was the salt. It still is the Saltwater Club uh, up here in uh, Metro Detroit. It doesn't really have any meetings anymore. Um, it's really focused now on captive breeding, and so uh, we put on a conference every year called the uh, Marine Breeding Initiative, and it actually has a website that will show you, uh, it, it basically, uh, you can track, and we'll show it on one of these live streams, and um, I'll have uh, the guy who's in charge of it come on with me, and we'll kind of walk through the site and kind of show you guys what it is. Um, it's being revamped right now. Um, so, I don't want to show you the old version and then show you a new one. But basically, if you go on that site, and I'll put the site name here. Even if it's old, the data is still good there. So, what it is, um, so it has all the uh, marine breeding initiative stuff. So, basically, what you, so if you breed a clownfish, it's like a uh, breeder's award program. So, if you're doing um, clownfish... Instead of like you bringing it to a club meeting, it's all uh, virtual and online, so we can do it all. Um, and there's a uh, people that approve it. Uh, there's a group of approvers. Um, I'm on the group of approvers, but I generally uh, default to uh, some of the people who are more experienced in that stuff. Um, there's some things that they have always questioned that I may not see. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, so there's a bunch of us that put this conference on in July. So, um, I'll reference Corvus's stream from uh, Monday, or no, from Friday when he was talking about all of the stuff going on in Hawaii. And so, about the uh, breeding the yellow tank. So, so it was 2016, I believe it was, we had uh, the people who did the yellow tanks and the um, and the uh, blue tanks. We had both of them the uh, same year. They kind of explained how they, you know, what they could explain about how they did it and like what the systems were. Um, you know, and those people did a lot of work. And uh, you know, I did, I did some research after Joel's stream because I was not, uh, you know, I hadn't followed it in a while because there wasn't any big announcements recently. Um, for a while, there was quite a few. They 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 did the yellow tang. They did the blue tang. Last year they did a bunch of angelfish. Uh, Dr. Matt Wittenrich did um, a bunch of. Uh, um, he started his own company with uh, uh, Pristine Energetics, I believe it is, and they uh, did a bunch of a uh, bunch of the uh, saltwater angelfish, like the conspic angel and stuff like that. Um, you can get now captive bred. Now it's not cheap to get those, but they are available. Um, so. Uh, a lot of the West Coast guys are talking about, or gals are talking about, um, yeah, there's there's uh, not a lot going on out West. I've heard that a lot from the Magnus and stuff, too. Like, everyone, like, um, they did one in San Diego, and then they did one in, L, in uh, um, where do I want to say it is? They did one in Las Vegas. But, uh, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's always this, this, like, West, you know, West Coast, East Coast sort of thing, and it's kind of, kind of strange. And I always thought California would be a big, 
hobbyist area just because um, oh they're probably expensive yeah that's probably true um, yeah I mean our you know when we run um, our conference here I mean it's not terrible I mean ours is just an auditorium uh, that we have it in but it is not um, it's not terribly expensive we're uh, but it's we're spread out further um, yeah that's true too I mean Chicago for me is a five-hour drive um, and I can even drive to uh, New York uh, from here I did I drove to the aquatic experience last year which um, I won't do again that's uh, just too that's just too far and uh, unfortunately I'm getting a little bit too old to drive that far uh, so we've been going about 46 minutes we'll go to the uh, top of the hour uh, see what other things there are um, HC Aqua yeah pretty good um, HC Aqua if you know how's the saltwater stuff there um, I know it's pretty limited from what I've heard on what you can bring in to Hawaii um, but I'm not 100% sure because I'm not uh, never been there but I've, this is what I like and I've like heard through the grapevine is it's kind of difficult to get stuff there to get people going or to get all the fish there just because you know you don't want them I would imagine just because you don't want it getting out and uh, ruining the environment and stuff like that uh, so Joseph from uh, JH Aquatics is here hey welcome um, you know what, you guys, I'll run the video again, just because uh, I know that Maple Street and JH were here, or have just come in. So, uh, we'll run the video again of, uh, um, what time am I showing up at the GVAC swap? Um, I don't know yet, I'll probably, I think it starts at 10 or 11. Uh, but I will, uh, probably when it starts. And, I don't know if, I've never been to it, but. I would imagine like most swaps, um, it gets really overrun in the beginning and then it kind of dies out. Uh, but for you guys that were just here, I'll rerun through this video one more time for you. So what this video is, is kind of the beginning of the fish barn. So this is the, um, basically where it started. Uh, if you can see here, there's just a bunch of, you know, it's a bunch of old, um, this bunch of, this was just storage. We just put junk in here, basically. Like, I stored my trailer in here. Um, there was a table in here, stuff like that. Um, so, and, you know, yard tools and stuff like that. So, I will say one of the challenges uh, from having the fish barn here was basically... Uh, we have saltwater stores here, but I enjoy catching my own. Yeah, that'd be cool. I remember I was watching one of those Bear Grylls, um, you know, shows where, where he, was, he was trapped on an island. And I remember he, like, got off the island. He built himself, like, a some sort of raft and went out into the ocean. And, uh, <clears throat> grab some water. So he went out into the, uh, oh yeah, so yeah, he went out into the, into the water and he caught like a, it was like a, a powder blue tang and I'm like, he, he started eating it. I'm like, dude, that thing's like 60 bucks, man. Like, put it back, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but yeah, he was, I was kind of like, yeah, you gotta put the, uh, put that thing back. So uh, we're now, so this is kind of like midway through the barn. So it's basically a, uh, uh, this is kind of starting some of the, uh, the drywalling and, uh, some of, actually, that's not really the drywall. I think I took that, all that drywall out. But that's just starting some of the insulation work, uh, framing in the windows, uh, stuff like that. So... So this is sort of just kind of the middle range, middle part of it, kind of in the midst of just doing work on out here. Uh, if you guys want some of the like the pictures, um, I didn't have time to pull them all down, and I did a lot of them on a uh, 
and edit them out. But if you go on to um, Corvus's um, Patreon page, there's a whole bunch of uh, pictures, too. I kind of, for a long time, I used that as sort of a, almost like a blog to where I would put pictures up of it. Uh, so we started kind of uh, covering the insulation here with uh, uh, waterproof plastic. And then heading up the stairs. Did I board up all the way? Yeah, I took the windows out. So I took um, I took all of the windows out in the um, I'll call it in the upstairs in the downstairs. The upstairs I still have the windows up. Uh, I am gonna take probably the one uh, we're facing towards the house here. The one in the back, I probably am going to take out. Uh, Matthew Wiggins, is, uh, I think he said he was from Traverse City. Um, so I'll have to see if I have Saturday off. Grand Rapids isn't a bad drive. Uh, so Terry's Tropical Tanks is here. Uh, went to research a new plant and thought he would drop in. Yes, hey Terry, how's it going? So yeah, we're... Uh, just kind of going through the fish barn right now and it's uh and basically how the fish barn was built so this is kind of as we're starting to get tanks in um, i tried to do some concrete work on the floor uh tried to level it out a little bit it kind of was sloped this way it's better but it's not perfect um and and i realized real quick that um, i'm too old and too out of shape to do concrete work That looks like a freaky face in the tank corner. Um, is that is that me in the background, or is that me with the camera? So, and then I think this up here is just gonna be a little bit of electrical work. Um, so these videos are on my channel, and not in, com in the complete videos of these. I kind of took some highlights for this. Uh, so if you go back in the old videos of the channel. Oh, uh, you can find them. Yeah, so this is the upstairs now. And then we're back downstairs again, kind of where I put the internet in. Uh, there's some piles of in insulation. So kind of cool, but freaky. Oh, okay. So, Chung, are you talking about the video part, or are you talking about me and the little box on the bottom? Yeah, I've kind of debated what to do with this studio space because I, I want to keep the tank behind me here. Uh, oh, okay, the video, okay. Hmm. Where? I'm trying to see it. Oh. I'll have to check that out later. Yeah, so this, this is just kind of like what happens when you move a fish room. Um, you've got air pumps sitting on saws. Um, you've got saws and bulkheads and cutting tools and pop cans. and That's just kind of what happens when you move a fish room. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope that there's not a ghost in here. If it is, it better make sure it stays heated in here. Actually, I did run across a skunk one day coming out here. Um, this summer, I was walking out here, and all of a sudden, I saw something um, run, acro run across the front of the door. And I'm pretty sure it was a skunk. So that was a little exciting. But um, I've not had any animals in here either. Uh, there's no, There's not been any mice, rabbits, anything else. Anything uh, muskrats or... Um, trash pandas or anything like that. So, so uh, they're doing good. Um, so what we'll what we'll do is we'll let this video cycle through one time, so the last people who are here get to see it. Uh, so this is um, right now. Um, came home with uh, three new plants, fifteen neons, and a red shell, red tailed shark. Just because I've um, done that. Um, so yeah, this is kind of starting to build the tanks, and I actually did end up tearing this rack down 
um, at some point. Um, yeah, this actually now is where the couch is. I ended up like pushing the couch back. Uh, Elizabeth is, is in here. Uh, did you get the substrate? Um, probably did. I'm sure he probably got some more uh, some more tanks. So, actually kind of funny. Uh, someone posted in one of the forums. I think it was last week. Or one of the Facebook groups. Where it's like they went to the fish store and didn't buy anything. And they, it was like a disappointing thing. And I actually responded to that. It's, I think it's kind of an evolution. I think you evolve in the hobby uh, to where you know what you want. But uh, once you know what you want and what you're looking for, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, once you know what you're looking for, you kind of uh, know what you want. And if it's not there, you kind of have the the nerve to uh, walk away. So it's kind of cool. So. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of studying. I still have to do, um, uh, do some of the things uh, Chung gave me for the, uh, uh, to update some of the stuff on my channel. So, yeah, so this is the TV. So, Um, so there's a TV downstairs. Um, that's the couch. Now I've pushed everything back since then, but this is um, this is about August, uh, September of this year or last year. Yeah, um, yeah. He did a channel review last night on my channel, and uh, I, th you know, there are some things I started working on a little bit last night, but it got too late. Um, Took me forever to get the like the the stupid Google Plus thing off of my uh, page. That kind of drove me nuts. Uh, where's the beer cooler? Um, the the beer cooler slash fish fridge didn't fit. So that is one thing that didn't make it in here. That was kind of planned. I'm one of those people that has to. Um, um, that TV is not that big. Um, so that TV, it was actually purchased from the uh, Salvation Army for about 30 bucks. I'd say it's about, um, uh, uh, maybe like 30 inches, 32 inches. I <laughs> just used the goldfish tank as a cooler. Um, I actually could put it outside right now and uh, just keep keep all that sort of thing outside um, a lot of people did that with liquor because the liquor won't freeze so you, you can there's not snow right now but if you had snow you can just stick the, the liquor in your beer in the snow uh, what did uh, oh Pam has a mess um, yeah Pam I've been there um, I've been there many times with the shop back Yeah, this is uh, me talking. So, all right. <clears throat> yeah, so just so you guys know, I do have a couple of, uh, more videos coming out this week. Uh, the one that's going to come out on Thursday is the unboxing of the Fishy Bingo. So there was quite a few uh, different things. Uh, what about, oh, yeah, you can. Michigan, un, unhumanly cold. It's pretty good this year. This winter's not been bad. Um... It's kind of funny, like, I follow Jeff Rose streams, and a lot of times he's uh, talking about, you know, we got eight inches of snow. We've not had any snow this year. Like, literally, we had one, like, I've not started the snowblower, like, all year. Which is strange. Um, Terry, the cold, yeah, I know. Yeah, Terry, that is probably true. Um, the winter is not over yet. So what will happen is it will probably come in April. And then, um, and then, yeah, Math, yeah, I heard that you guys up north further, um, I think Matthew said he was from Traverse City, which is, for those of you who don't know, um, 
basically this is Michigan and Traverse City is up there and where I am at is right here so <laughs> dude remember who you're talking to it's raining here this week in LA and it's a statewide emergency Oh, uh, Pam, I'm really sorry about, um, I didn't catch all of it. Let me see. No, water pipe broke inside my house this morning. The water ran for over an hour while I tried to find someone to crawl under the house to turn the water off. Uh, 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 that's not good. That is not good. So, uh, looks like now we've gotten uh, to the end here. Um, so, once this kind of cycles through again, uh, yeah, this is pretty much the end of it. So, I'm going to flip the scene back real quick. And as you can tell, the uh, lights came off here. Uh, the tank's behind me uh, with the Apex. So, uh, I do appreciate you guys coming out. Um, you guys have any last questions for me? Uh, we'll give it another couple minutes. And uh, go ahead and shut it down. Um, yeah, Pam, if you were closer to me, I'd come help you, but uh, I'm a little far, I think. Um, been there for sure. So, uh, yeah, definitely want to thank you guys uh, for coming out. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll, we'll, we, uh, excuse me. We will uh, hit it again next uh, next Tuesday. So, uh, in the meantime, I do thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for coming out tonight. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I'll post up, uh, I'll try to post a little earlier um, next week. Uh, this was sort of uh, last minute. I was trying to find a uh, topic. So, we'll post up again uh, next week and uh, we'll see, uh, see what we come up with. Yeah, thank you, Candy. I do appreciate it. Uh, thank you, uh, Chung. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Liz. So we're going to go ahead here and we'll... Uh, bar looks fantastic. Thanks, Pam. Uh, good luck with uh, cleaning up all your water. So we'll go ahead here and shut it down.